So you're going to tell us that Canada, and this is and this is true, folks, not tongue in cheek. Canada has solved the problem of global warming, and instead of everybody being excited, some people are stark raving mad about it. Go ahead and tell us. Yeah, I heard this story. This story broke on BBC yesterday. There's a company in Canada called Carbon Engineering, which has this invention. So this is a purely a capital uh, venture here. There's, there's nothing. Uh, there, there's, there's no, no, there's none, there is no welfare science involved in any of this, Carl. This okay, is good. all for profit. Good. Okay, com- company Carbon Engineering. The capitalists have solved this problem of, of greenhouse gas emissions and, and, and so much as CO2 is responsible for that. And I think that Christians in the church should be more concerned. We shouldn't balk environmentalism in so much as we should care about being good stewards of our planet. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we True. need to be a... We, we, we should be leading the charge on this, by the way, and that's a whole other subject. I'm disappointed that the church has allowed this to go the way of welfare. You know, the church used to be in charge of welfare until the government got its claws into it. Yeah. And uh, the church should be leading the charge, the anti-pollution charge. But anyway, these capitalists uh, at Carbon Engineering, in, 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 I think they're in B.C., they invented this machine that takes all the CO2 out of the air and makes fuel out of it fuel that can be used in any internal combustion engine. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, At Carbon Engineering, we're commercializing two clean energy technologies that can rapidly accelerate our shift into a net-zero world. This is from their website. Uh, Direct air capture technology can deliver large-scale negative emissions by removing carbon dioxide directly from the atmosphere, and and they also have a, a product called Air to Fuels. And that technology can significantly reduce the carbon footprint of transportation by creating synthetic, clean fuels made from air, water, and renewable power. This is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, carbon engineering has proudly developed an industrially scalable direct air capture technology, which can remove CO2 directly from the atmosphere as an, at an affordable price point. So basically, to wrap this up, this company has, has this invention. It draws air in. And spews the and the stream of, of carbon dioxide comes out the other end. Okay. Yeah. And right now, this toy model, this this uh, this um, uh, this model that they have there is fully functioning. They don't need to do any more testing on this thing. It's working, and it's and this small little device that they have there is producing one thousand tons. I'm sorry, make that one ton. So two thousand pounds of CO2 capture a day, a day. That's enormous for this little toy. But get this now, it can be upscaled to produce 1 million tons of CO2. That's the equivalent of 250,000 cars, uh, Carl, per year. I mean, they're going to stuff these things next to water treatment plants in L.A., Chicago. China will probably buy one and just start making their own after they reverse engineer it. Yes. And, uh, you know, this is, this, is, this is what's happening in the world. This is how the problem of, of greenhouse gas emissions in so much as they relate to CO2, this problem has been solved. And this is a dead issue now. And even the, even the socialists on... BBC, because they interviewed a bunch of people about this, they came out and they said, yes, this, this technology is finished. It's done. It's been completely uh, configured into a functioning unit that draws one ton. Now, this is a small unit now. It draws one ton of CO2 out of the atmosphere every day. And the upscale model, they can upscale it to, to draw out one million tons <laughs> That's a lot of CO2. This is pure CO2, yeah. uh, one million tons out of the atmosphere a year. And uh, now they can take that and convert that into uh, a fuel that can be used in any internal combustion engine, diesel engines, gasoline engines, okay. you name it. It can be used in it, and it has a net zero emissions. And so they were interviewing these people, and uh, they, they interviewed some, envir- some welfare science environmentalists, and they're fuming about this, Carl, because – First of all, they didn't invent it. Second of all, this will take away their their cash flow. And third of all, what they're most upset about is this will give the oil companies more time to breathe, mm-hmm. where they can still use oil to you know make gasoline and diesel fuel and so on to run the economy and uh, plastics and so on to run the economy. 
and it gives them more room to breathe and perhaps stay in business, stay alive, and have these other machines out there sucking in all the CO2, producing more fuel, uh, environmentally friendly fuel. But they are upset because their goal is to destroy the oil industry. They've already destroyed the coal industry virtually. In Canada, there are no more coal-fired plants. Now, this would take the CO2 out of the atmosphere that coal plants produce also, by the way. So <laughs> you, put, you put one of these devices next to a, coal, a coal-fired power plant, and bingo, bango, it's sucking in the CO2 just as fast as that thing's putting it out. So the CO2 problem has been solved. Now, we'll just have to see if any big interest groups like Al Gore and George Soros, if they're able to put the kibosh to this thing, I hope and pray they don't. But it's looking like this company is going to be, if you're looking for some place to invest, this is it, because they have solved the greenhouse gas problem 100%. It's all just a matter of them upscaling it, sending in trucks, hauling these out to New York City, L.A., uh, Dallas, wherever, and just, just planting them in the ground there, Carl. Okay, that's well, now, let me just – all it's going to take to l- make this l- happen. Let me interject. What's the name of the company again? Carbon Engineering. They're out of Canada, okay. and uh, they're okay. making big things happen right. over right. there. And this, this may sound Listen. like I've been paid to, to promote these no. guys. I have not. I know, I know, I know. And we hear the music. Time's running out. So please stay on top of this for us as it all continues to develop so we can keep everybody up on this story because this has the potential of being huge. Mike Shusmith, thank you for joining us sure. today. And uh, we'll see you next time. You have and, a great uh, time. Sharon has died aged eight. We are with one of Rabbi Kaduri's disciples.